Welcome to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki. The latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. Sitting in for Bob Bennis, here's Father Paul Hartman. Good morning, and welcome to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki. My name is Father Paul Hartman. I am the Judicial Vicar of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee and the President at Catholic Memorial High School in Waukesha, Wisconsin. It has been a pleasure to fill in these last few weeks for Bob Bennis, the co-host of the show from Relevant Radio, but co-hosting with himself, Archbishop Jerome Listecki. Archbishop, it's Labor Day weekend. Uh, any special plans? Father Paul, uh, and none for me. Last last minute barbecues a little bit, a few hot dogs. You know, the, the enthusiasm of a celebratory weekend, the enthusiasm of young people returning to school, the enthusiasm of families sending kids off to school. Well, today, as we transition from the end of summer into fall and kind of the organization of, of life around the academic year, we're going to look at how the church, through the work of the laity, we've talked a lot on the programs I've co-hosted about the work of the archdiocese, but we have such wonderful lay people in so many missions and ministries that are supporting the action of the church. And in, in a particular way, we're looking at laity and, and evangelization today. I think you would say uh, as quickly as anyone, how dependent we are on the work of the laity oh, in all of these things. Absolutely. And uh, of course, I just want to go review with you my three priorities, Catholic identity, mm-hmm. evangelization, yes. and stewardship. And stewardship. And yes. uh, obviously, you, you, um, evangelization is what we do. And uh, empowering the uh, the laity, um, c- coming out of Vatican II, uh, I would say that... Um, most individuals, um, in, in taking a look at the formulation of the, the, the vision of Vatican II, was understanding that the, the church is not possessed by the clergy, by the religious and the clergy, that it is actually possessed by all of the faithful, and all of the faithful have their own basically particular calling. And when we were, we we're talking about evangelization that comes right of the gospel, Christ did not, uh, did not say just to the apostles go and baptize preach, teach, and, um, uh, and evangelize, but was saying that to the entire church. Mm-hmm. This, was the, this was the mission of the entire church. It's probably a, a great kind of connection to say it's not just e, the E for evangeliz- evangelization, it's energizing. It has to energize the ministers. It has to energize uh, the people of faith. Did, I think that came right out of the synod. I, you know, it's amazing where I pick these things up. It's amazing <laughs> I where I pick these right things up. Right out of the Senate, right. Thank you, yes. Father Paul, hey, no for problem. doing that. Thank you. I right. will tee you up anytime is necessary. <laughs> Focusing on the work of the of, of the laity, as our guest today in studio, we have a, a woman who I have so much respect and, and love for the work that she has done. I've known her for, on and off for a few years and kind of various connections, and our paths always seem to cross in, in wonderfully uh, surprising ways. But joining us today is Erin Berghaus. She is a, a musician. She is a, a creative person. She is a person of great, deep, deep faith. And now is embarking with uh, with a group of people around her, great supporters around her, on a- an evangelical effort, Ahava Productions. But I think our first goal is to get to know Aaron Berghaus a little bit. So, Aaron, welcome, and tell us a little bit about yourself and your faith journey. Thank you, Father. It is a blessing to have known you uh, and meet you in my lifetime, and and it's always wonderful to see you and to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I am a mother of five children, and I am married to a wonderful man named Brad Berghaus, and we live in North Lake, Wisconsin. I have uh, four grandchildren. The fourth is due right on Thanksgiving Day, Uh, and I'm very blessed to know the Lord, and I love him with all that I am and all that I have, and I have a deep devotion to Blessed Mary, and it's just a blessing to be here today with you. In a few days, we'll be celebrating the the feast of the birth of Mary. So very important to our church, realizing that 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 yes, that she gave is the example of of the church alive and the church vibrant. Aaron, tell us a little bit about your faith story. You know what, um, you know how you came into basically a relationship, how you became empowered. Um, uh, by the Spirit in your life? Who were the examples of, um, uh, of faith growing up for you? 
Well, my story began very early, and it was a rough one. And so um, very when I was very young, um, there was a time when I was a young child where I knew that only God would be the one that was there for me. I was raised by my father, and I really never knew my mother. And... Um, and so it was my both my father's mother, my grandmother, who was uh, loved the Lord, and uh, and so through her and through there were others as well that I saw their love for God. But I remember vividly at age twelve um, realizing that Jesus Christ would always be there for me, no matter where I went or um, where God called me, that He would never leave me. And as a young child, that was. Uh, that was a, a tough time during my life. Did you have a, um, um, a a sense of music ministry right away from the very beginning? Was music an interest for you? Music was an interest. I loved to sing, um, and I remember my dad gave me a guitar when I was in high school, and so I wrote a couple songs and I played them for a friend, a couple of friends, and they started to cry. And I thought, well, that was awkward. <laughs> and so I put the guitar away and I never wrote another song until many years later, uh, it would have been 20, 23 years ago. Then I wrote another song and that came about, um, because I had a dear friend who was going through a really hard time and, Sometimes this is the only way I can describe it, but if I can't find words to say how I feel about a person, how I wish that I could help them, I think that's when the soul searches for a song. And soul so, searching for a song. That sounds mm-hmm. like a title of a book so, yeah. <laughs> for the future. Huh? Uh, so and, and, uh, tell us about your uh, basically interest in the, the faith, how... How did I come to know the Catholic Church? It was amazing. God is so creative and hilarious. Um, So we moved to Wisconsin 22 years ago, and we were looking for schools for our children. Uh, My oldest son is 30, and my youngest daughter is four. And uh, big spread there. Yes, honey. there is. Yes, there is. <laughs> She'll keep you young. Yes, she, she does. Will. So much joy every day. Uh, Faustina and Sophia are the youngest, and then there's Rachel, and then there's Jordan, who's the seminarian, and then there's Zachary, who's the oldest. But uh, when we came to Wisconsin, we were looking for good schools, and we met some friends, and they said, well, the Catholic schools, are they're very good schools. And at that time, I had no idea that my birth mother had baptized me Catholic. And so it was through that event that one of my aunts told me that I was baptized Catholic. We started looking at the Catholic schools, and God used really our children to draw us into the faith. Beautiful story. Thank you. God will use uh, uh, various instruments, and the strangest ones we won't wouldn't even expect. You know, right. And some so close to us, yes. like yours. Yes. And so, um, so that started uh, a process of um, uh, deepening, I guess, faith because you're already a person of faith. Yes. But this was a, yes. know, a deepening of faith and commitment to the church. And like many times in our life, then you look back, and there are moments from from when I was in high school where I remember going to St. Francis in Grand Rapids, Michigan with a friend of mine and walking into the Catholic Church and feeling this feeling that I couldn't describe, but I liked it. And um, then as an adult, then going through this journey that God had planned for me, stepping into St. Charles in Heartland for the first time in, as a, in the Catholic Church um, in Wisconsin. And now that I've been in the Catholic Church um, and so grateful to God for this really this beautiful journey that I've been on. Um, I think I can find the words to describe it a little bit more clearly because I'm a little older, but you feel the presence of God. Aaron, you bring such creativity, whether it's your music or we're going to talk a little bit about the production, Ahava Productions, uh, the production house in a little bit, but we do have to take a break. We have to do some news headlines with Relevant Radio. So uh, thank you for joining us, Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Lestecki. We'll be back. Are you or a loved one struggling with age-related challenges? St. Camilla's Geriatric Care Managers are here to partner with seniors and their families to help manage the many challenges and transitions associated with aging and health care. Jean explains how St. Camilla's Geriatric Care Management assisted her father. People want to maintain their independence, and that's what he wanted. And that was the most important thing for him. However, at times he didn't know what was safest or best for him. And that's when we really leaned on care management, and they were able to help us so much. 
They were able to establish a trusting, caring relationship with my father. And we were able to trust and know that with their guidance, we would be able to keep my father safe in his own apartment. For more information regarding St. Camilla's Geriatric Care Management, go to relevantradio.com keyword care. That's keyword care. Good morning. I'm Grace David with headlines from the Catholic Herald and catholicherald.org. It's been quite a journey for survivors of clergy abuse across the Archdiocese of Milwaukee and for parishioners, too, as a settlement agreement was reached in early August. Now both sides are waiting for November 9th, when the agreement either gets an approval or a thumbs down from U.S. Bankruptcy Court Judge Susan Kelly. The amended plan provides more than $21 million in settlement proceeds to certain abuse survivors and establishes a half a million dollar therapy fund for abuse survivors a very important element for Archbishop Lestecki, who insisted on continuing assistance from the very beginning. Our and attorneys say the settlement is both a time saver and a money saver. They estimate that the case could have continued for an additional three to five years, adding approximately $33 million in costs. Get more details on the disclosure statement and the plan for reorganization in this week's Catholic Herald and at catholicherald.org. In national news, Pope Francis is making a surprise appearance on American television. The Holy Father is the featured guest on ABC TV's long-running 2020 news magazine on Friday night. He surprised Catholics in McAllen, Texas on Monday with a satellite chat at a town hall meeting. His pop-in segment is part of an hour-long preview show for the Pope's visit to the United States. 2020 airs in the Milwaukee area on WISN Channel 12. The Pope is scheduled to visit New York, Washington, D.C., and Philadelphia later this month. In more Pope Francis news, it's been all over the Internet and lunchrooms all week long. The Pope's latest statement on forgiveness and abortion. As part of the Year of Mercy that begins on December 8th, the Holy Father has granted to priests worldwide the authority to absolve women for the sin of abortion. Previously, in many dioceses, This authority was limited to bishops. The Pope is urging priests to welcome women who have had abortions back to the sacrament, to explain the gravity of the sin committed, and to indicate to them a, quote, path of authentic conversion by which to obtain the true and generous forgiveness of the Father who renews all with his presence. Read more about this historic act at catholicherald.org. Another reminder that the push for peace is officially on in the Archdiocese, as Catholic answer Archbishop Lestecki's call to shine a light on the darkness of violence and criminal activity. A month ago, more than 600 people attended the Mass for Peace at Milwaukee's St. Francis of Assisi, and now another parish is calling everyone to prayer. On Sunday, September 20th, All Saints Catholic Church welcomes Father Tim Kitsky to lead a community prayer service for peace. The service is scheduled for 5.30 in the afternoon and is open to the public. Visit archmill.org for more information. As we observe Labor Day this weekend, we have the opportunity to reflect on the spiritual aspect of work. In this year's Labor Day message, Archbishop Thomas Wensky of Miami says that, Labor is one important way we honor our brothers and sisters in God's universal human family. In the creation story, God gives us labor as a gateway into participation with him in the ongoing unfolding of creation. He even quoted Pope Francis in regards to labor, adding that, Human labor, at its best, is a deeply holy thing that ought to honor our dignity as we help God maintain the fabric of the world. For all of you who work, whether in the home, the private sector, or public sector, we thank you and pray for you on this Labor Day. We hope that your holiday is full of joy and laughter and that your work days are peaceful and blessed. I'm Grace David. Thank you for listening. We now return to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Lestecki. Good morning and welcome back to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Lestecki. I'm Father Paul Hartman, a priest of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. As we enter into this Labor Day weekend, we're looking at how the, the church with its la- laity, with its active faithful can really have an impact, can evangelize. Our guest in studio is Erin Berghaus, a, a wonderful woman of faith, a wonderful woman of the church, a wonderfully creative woman. And, and I was sharing off the air, the first time we met, Erin uh, came to an event recognizing uh, 
uh, Representative Hyde from Illinois, who was great pro-life champion, and she did a song called Man of the House just in dedication and in honor of him and his work in the pro-life movement. And I just have always thought of then Aaron's work as taking that creative feel, that soul of an artist, as you said, and bringing it to bear on the needs of our day. And right now, one of the great needs of our day is to enliven the faith, to offer it to the, to millennials, to a younger generation, to a world in need. And you have now gathered with a, a group of some very talented people and put together a production house, Ahava Productions. What brought that about? Well, uh, it started a few years ago, and uh, it was really uh, the Lord placed a mission on my heart to evangelize exactly like you said, to evangelize the beauty of our faith in a language that our current culture speaks, and that would be in a language of entertainment. Um, and and that we would take the words of a priest and wrap it with an envelope of art, and that we would marry both the visual but also musical and uh, the tradition of the word of God from the heart of a priest. The work that you've done is, is is really amazing. So why don't we take a moment and we're going to take a listen to some clips from uh, the different works of Ahava Productions. Did you ever wonder how we got here? I mean, none of us chose to be born, right? We just found ourselves on this planet living as little children, running around in this particular skin, bound to this family. It all seems pretty mysterious. Almost like a gift, almost like it's been laid out for us. So the real question becomes, what are we to make of all this? That life has a purpose and a plan, and we're all part of it. There's so much more to us than meets the eye. Now, you probably recognize the voice of Bishop Don Hying, former auxiliary here in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee, now in Gary, Indiana. He he really is in these first efforts that Ahava Productions is putting together. He's very much the voice of it and, and, a, and a wonderful, insightful voice that he is. If you want to see more and have the opportunity to look at more of what Ahava Productions is doing, just go to their website. And it is Ahava, H-A-H-A-V-A. Productions, all is one word, dot com, ahavaproductions.com. Archbishop, you realize the importance of efforts like this in the Archdiocese. Oh, sure. I've um, um, I've been involved with um, uh, media since I was uh, basically in my first theologate in uh, the seminary. So that goes way back, you know, when Morris was inventing the, the code type of thing. So it, I wasn't going to say I, anything, I, sir. I knew. I just, I just preempted you, Paul, because you were going to say that. It, uh, I was so going to talk about smart Marconi, signals. But. Marconi was using the can in order to talk to... Uh, in broadcast, but I I've understood the importance of um, and the significance of media for um, for a long time. Now, what interests interests me about uh, about you, Aaron, is that you say, and, and let me quote you: "I've never had music training, never had film training, never had any training for anything that God has called me to do." Now, how do you put this together? What did you it just pop out of the the, the sky? All I did was say yes, and God sends everyone that well, he... who are some who, of those yes, wonderful things? We have an thing. amazing uh, board of directors, uh, amazing group of individuals who dedicate their knowledge and their holiness and their talents to serve the do church. they have names? They do. do. They do. Yes, yes. We have uh, Cardinal James Harvey, Bishop Donald Hine, Father Anthony Mary Stelton from EWTN, now, Father, first of all, oh, I, I know I know Bishop Hine and I know Cardinal Harvey. Yes. They know little or nothing about television yeah. or uh, the DVD production. So, well, so uh, they, they can't be the ones doing the, the the shooting. Well, the the board of directors really they are the core, the foundation of Hava Productions, and then the dream team. We refer to them as the dream team, uh, the individuals that really help us put together the work of art. And so we have Mike Gillis, who's the head cinematographer. We have Ryan Brooks. We call him Brooksy. Um, we have Brian Meir, who's production. And then uh, we have myself. And we have a, a wonderful makeup artist named Kim Goodwin and an audio 
um, the master of audio, Bill Armstrong. How do you Armstrong. come up with the conceptualization? Like, w- what theme do you decide to grab hold of and then and then basically uh, put out it visually as well as um, uh, in terms of auditory? Well, Bishop Don came up with the, with the theme. And so it's really the words from his heart. And his series, the Anima series, then Umbrellas, uh, the films that that he will release and so the first one being crux and the second one being kenosis and the third one that's just been released is blaze and so those are his words from his heart and then my job is to then pray and um and really try and grasp the visuals that can support it is what it is that he says. And what's what's the relationship? Like crux obviously being cross, is that what it is? Yes. And yes. Also obviously being knowledge. Yes, to empty yourself in order that you can be filled with God, the beauty of God. And then blaze is the Holy Spirit. And the beautiful thing of what Bishop Donald Hine does is that from the beginning, what he starts out is like he could walk with anyone on the street of Milwaukee, no matter where you are in your life, no matter where you are in your faith. And as he progresses through his films, he goes a little bit deeper and deeper into the beauty of the faith. And at the end of each film, he then allows the viewer to have um, an interior an interior life with Christ. And so he'll leave off with a question. Um, if you have a DVD purchase, there's three questions and there's also some guidance on to uh, supplement materials to help really look for the answers to those questions. But um, it leads the viewer into a prayer life with God. And that's the most important thing is not to just be entertained for 12 minutes, but that also when you walk away, that you're leading um, others to really that relationship with Jesus Christ. And as you progress through the films from, from crux through blaze, also the topics get just a little bit deeper and a little bit more beautiful on the unveiling of our faith. Who's the target? Uh, you know, normally, you know, when you do a, a, a production, you yes. have a, a basically a target audience. I mean, if you did animation, obviously you'd be talking about children. Who, who, who would be the target that you would be looking at? And, you know, we looked at this when we first were starting the series. What is our target audience? And, and it maybe seemed just a little bit silly that um, we wanted a broad audience, but we we all have this deep hunger to know God. We all love to be entertained. We all love good music and we love good visuals. Um, But yet what we've found is that it does really target the young Catholic. So the high school Catholic. And um, we're really excited about the National Catholic Youth Conference in November in Indianapolis is going to be using the films and we're thrilled about that that's where 25,000 youth from across our country come to join together and it's it's just really invigorating um, and inspiring to be around all of those kids from all over the country Um, so there's definitely been an attraction to the youth Um, but then again I've seen also I have some really youthful people in the house and so I see that even as small children really can it can speak to their heart as well and then there's also the older people. I think that I'm now officially the older people. But, um, you know, I can work and I can, I can watch and I can transcribe the script. But it's amazing to me through the beauty of God that I can sit there after having seen the same script for many weeks that it can still impact my own soul and bring me closer to Christ. And so it is really it does appeal to all ages, but definitely there's a deep hunger in our youth. You Watching the videos, Bishop Don's style is very conversational. So mm-hmm. did you just let him go yes. and then you built everything else around yes. it or did he get scripted? No, he... He is because he would not follow the script anyway. Well, he, so. he 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 would, but yes, he just really is. He is he is writing. It's his, it's the words of his heart that come out, and then we wrap the art around it. And then you choose a, a song. There's there's first with music. Then we try to write the song depending on who the singer songwriter is. But beautiful, beautiful young Catholic singer songwriters: Luke Spihar out of Minnesota, Joe Zambon out of Toronto. Um, really beautiful. And so we we really take the words that already have been written 
by Bishop Don, and then we then we do the song. And so the song, in a sense, and it was important to me because I'm a Catholic singer songwriter. This is a core of the passion of who I am. But we walk away from a film, but that song stays in our pocket, and that song you can hope and pray will reiterate the message of the film and live on in the soul and in the mind and the heart of the person, bringing them back then to the teaching of the beautiful bishop and to the words that he had to say. That's the hope. Well, they're beautiful pieces of work. Thanks, Father. And we'll be back in just a few moments. Hospice. It's the one word that people are afraid to say out loud. Yet for someone who has experienced St. Camilla's Hospice, it takes on a whole new meaning. We chose St. Camilla's Hospice because it was home hospice. I think it would have broken Lois's heart if she had to leave and go to a strange place. And one of the things that we particularly appreciated was the Catholic help that we got when Lois was in hospice. We had pastoral help. We had chaplains who were absolutely fantastic. They were all so friendly. The hospice care was as good for Lois as it was for me. Hospice care is a physical and spiritual journey, not just for the patient, but for an entire family. St. Camilla's Hospice provides compassionate care right in your loved one's own home. All caregivers and resources are thoughtfully selected from the St. Camilla's community, which continues to serve your family long after the physical care has ended. To learn more, go to RelevantRadio.com, keyword hospice. Welcome back to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki. I'm Father Paul Hartman, a priest of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. We we are having a wonderful discussion with Aaron Berghaus of Ahava Productions. Aaron, the, the work that you're doing continues to grow, and you've got great hopes for the future. In just a few seconds, what... Tell people how they can learn more and continue to participate. Well, thank you for asking, Father. If you go to our website, ahavaproductions.org or .com, either way it will get you there, um, you'll see the beautiful board of directors that have really committed to their time and talents to help Ahava Productions. One of the exciting things that's happening right now is that we're being aired on EWTN. And so it's in a a regular rotation, uh, which we're so grateful for uh, the viewers to be able to see that anywhere in the world. And Archbishop, you know, the, the work of evangelization, the work of lay people, surely you're appreciative of it. I know that. Oh, no, not at all, Father Paul. That's a, not at all. I'm trying to get you to have the last word here, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm going to have the last word. That uh, the, the aspect of today in our secular society is such a need to transform and reform uh, uh, the culture that every aspect, uh, Ahava and all um, uh, individuals should realize that the story has to be taken um, um, by them into the home and has to be taken in the business, and has to be taken in the schools, and has to be uh, professed. And the, the job of the mission of the church is is uh, is the job that every one of us has. Well, I know Aaron's work begins and ends with prayer. I know our efforts this morning need to close with a prayer, and we will use the prayer for the mission of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. Right, and we'll begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we We praise praise you and we we bless bless you, you. for you You are are great great indeed. indeed. Grant, Grant we we pray, pray, as as on that that first Pentecost, Pentecost, that that tongues of fire may descend upon us, and that the the driving wind of your Holy Spirit Spirit may blow boldly into our hearts. Loving God, we ask you, make us effective and holy witnesses of the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Increase our faith through the sacramental life of the Church. Grant us courage to follow you as faithful disciples. Embolden us, O God, so that we may go forth to proclaim your gospel and renew the face of the earth. In this Archdiocese of Milwaukee, we humbly pray for strength and fortitude to follow your great commission, to go and make disciples of all people, living our faith through word and deed. Through the intercession of St. John the Evangelist, patron of the Archdiocese, and Mary, Mother of the Church, We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God be upon you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Aaron, thank you for joining us. Archbishop, thank you for hosting. To our listeners, thank you for tuning in to Relevant Radio, 100.1 FM, 1640 AM. Please do search us out on the Internet for these recordings on our YouTube channel. 
Blessings to you this weekend. This has been Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki. Join us again next week for the latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee.